promote it. This is Team 1, and our project consists of 12 degree of freedom by the robot design. My name is Jorge Mar. Kevin Bertram. Cesar Rivera. First of all, what is biped? Uh, biped is a, it's a vehicle or it is only two degree of freedom or locomotion. Um, since there's only two, uh, two legs to sustain its weight, it gives a, to maintain the, the weight center of gravity becomes one of the biggest issues um, in designing a biped. From statement, to be a biped of robots, that can simulate a simple task, simple human task, in the uh, in expression of its environment. Objective, we be demonstrating the following. Walking, turning, standing one leg, self-balancing, getting up from fall, and obstacle avoidance. These are design concepts. First of all, chassis. We be obtaining the, the scalp platform for mixed motion, and then these are the electronics that we obtained, the ARC-32, ARC SSC-32, accelerometer, ultrasound transducer, and 12 server. Since there's a 12 degree of freedom, each, one, each server gives one degree of freedom, and then there's six degree of freedom per leg. And in programming, we will be using the basic Atom Pro, and uh, it's motion sequencer, so that's give a visual representation of the robot. We, it might be much easier on programming. And uh, these are the cost analysis. As you see, the, the, the total came up to be almost up, about 750. It's a little pricey, but uh, that's the basic range of design by head. I'm going to go ahead and get into a little detail on the uh, workflow of the robot and some of the components on board. Um, it starts off with a PS2 controller, as you can see here. With the PS2 controller, we can send signals to the uh, ARC32, which um, processes that data based on the program that we've, we've loaded onto it. And it also can take in the inputs from the uh, accelerometer and the ultrasonic transducer. With the uh, accelerometer, we can measure the X, Y tilt of the robot. And that aids in balancing. And the uh, ultrasonic transducer can detect the distance to an object in front of it or um, to the side, actually. Um, the next thing that we've got here is the ARC32 actually communicates with the SSC32. Now, the uh, SSC32 has all of the commands, the servo commands, loaded to it. So it actually has a separate program or a series of programs loaded into it. And with the ARC32, we can actually call those programs uh, like subroutines essentially. And they both get programmed separately. They use different software as we mentioned earlier. And the SSC32 can handle up to 32 servos. With our robot we're using 12. As we have six degrees of freedom per leg. And here's a little schematic of the components on board. Starting with the servos, we have six per leg. Um, it's built upon the Lynx Motion Scout chassis, which is an aluminum 60-61 based uh, um, alloy. And we have, in the back here, the two controller boards. We have the ARC32 and the SSC32. They're piggybacked on top of each other. Um, and this picture is a little difficult to see, but the next one I can get a little close up. But here we have the PS2 controller receiver. We have the ping sensor mounted on the on the front or the ultrasonic transducer. The accelerometer is up here, and that's all. Um, the accelerometer and, and actually a voltage regulator attached to an auxiliary board, which is in this picture. This auxiliary board was built to handle the uh, uh, five volts needed for the accelerometer and the ultrasonic transducer. And um, let's see. Now you can get a better view of the ARC32 and the SSC32 there piggybacked on top of each other. They, uh, uh, just to mention, they communicate through a uh, serial type protocol. And I'll hand it over. Okay. So uh, the problems that were encountered in the in the you know this project is basically um, electrical electrical problems. Uh, 
we tried it, uh, to use batteries to run autonomous, but it's just too demanding. The servos are eating too much power. Uh, we tried it, and the problems that we encountered with that is that if the power that the servos take take away from the ultrasound sensor, sorry, from, from the ultrasound sensor, yes, and it, they take from the accelerometer. So basically, we have the motion, but we don't have <coughs> sensors to detect distance or to detect motion, you know, accelerometer in any either way. So that's the main concern there. Uh, the other thing is that the servos overheat. Uh, if we have them to run and you know to, to testing for a longer period of time, we get uh, overheated and thus we can burn the other server. So it it was um, time it was a time constraint constraint because we needed to program a lot of things to different boards and link them together, write a main code so they work together. So <clears throat> we had to give it a little time in between each so we we, we don't burn out the server. The other thing is that the accelerometer output was not consistent. Um, it was because we bought a very, I would say, uh, inexpensive accelerometer, and uh, the accelerometer uh, readings, let's say, we tilted to the left, it was reading 400 units in its the accelerometer. Then the robot tried to lift up from that tilting to the left. After that, we did it again, tilted to the left, but this time at the same angle, and uh, this time it read 600. So it was even picking it up faster. So basically, the readings from the accelerometer were very, very difficult for us to program an actual self-balancing uh, uh, feature on it because of the, the readings were just all over the place, and we couldn't uh, figure out exactly what was wrong with the with the accelerometer, and, and it was just due to that. It was due to you need know, you need to get a better accelerometer. Programming and testing, uh, testing, linking the ARC32 and the SSC32 was a challenge of writing a main code so they communicate with each other. And then designing the sequences. The sequences were uh, written in the SSC32 board. We have different sequences, one for walking, one for one leg, one for uh, standing upright. So it's all different sequences. And then in performance, we encounter a problem that if you do it on a uh, on a table like this one, it'll slide the feet. On, the, on a carpet, it won't, so it, it, it actually did create different performance. When you want to turn a right, it will turn more to the right in, on a, this surface rather than on the carpet. It will do a 90 degree turn exactly on the carpet, and in this, it will do like uh, more than 90, uh, around 110 degree turn. So that was a challenge. You need to know where, to which terrain you're standing. So now we're going to do a live presentation of our robot. We've got a, we've got a backup video just in case. Yes, correct. And but first thing we're going to demonstrate here. Oh, I'm sorry. Overall, mm -hmm. you know, as I said, the project was a success. Um, if we could do it all over again, I guess we would uh, ask for more help from people that actually did five pets and um, work a little bit better with the sequences. You know, re write more sequences so we could do a lot more things especially with the accelerometer. Another thing is that we could add a camera. We actually uh, tried to get one, but the weight was a main concern. As you will see in our demonstration, the, 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 board, the two boards are very heavy, and the servos, you know, it's 12 degrees of freedom. It's, it's very difficult for that, and it needs a lot of power. So let's continue with our um, okay. demonstration. So the first thing we're going to demonstrate here is it's going to pick up its right foot and balance on its left leg. So let's see if we can do that here. That's the dynamic instability of the servos, the feedback mechanism of them. So there we'll do it one more time. So now we will demonstrate uh, getting up from the ground. So this is basically a weight concern there, but um, here it is. So this is the simulated if it has fallen over and needs to get back up. Okay, here we'll demonstrate it one more time. 
And actually the voltage that is going into the board also affects greatly the performance. So now we're going to demonstrate um, how attaching a camera will be helpful uh, with the pain sensor. So this would be simulating scanning around, panning, and tilting. So now we're going to demonstrate uh, obstacle avoidance. Okay, so here he's going to start walking. And if he senses an obstacle, he's going to make a turn. In this case, it's a left turn. And if I can turn it really quickly, so we can fall the table. So now, one more left turn. Now he starts walking straight again. The table was like ice for his, his feet. So. As I said, the friction, we actually test this, tested this on, on, on the carpet. And so now he's identified an object in front of him. So he's going to turn. And you can put that down so they don't think you're actually driving. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure, let me actually get it from the start position again. So here we go. Go back to the main. Here. I'm going to put the, I'll run the code right now. I'm just going to let it go. So that's walking. It's kind of slippery there, but so here's an obstacle. So it's going to turn to the left. I'm try to avoid it. So, there it is. Also, um, what we made it do, oops, it has some bugs in the code. You know, but it's, it's a little... Actually, I think, I think actually we've already the service. Yeah. Um, okay, right. now we can also demonstrate walking with the single button. So we, I, I can put it right there to just walk straight, so it'll keep walking, and that's how it will be helpful to have a camera on it, just to see where is it going. Then we're back to the home position, and I'm just going to demonstrate to turn it to the left. So there it is. So the difficult part in turning and walking is actually shifting the robot center of gravity over the foot that's supporting its weight. So like we do it like intuitively as human beings, but teaching a robot how to do that is very difficult. Okay. So that completes our presentation. Thank you very much.